For over a decade, Odisha has been facing one extreme weather condition to another, from heat waves to cyclones, droughts to floods. And of the last 105 years, Odisha has been declared disaster affected for over 95 of them. What is the reason for this? Is it a result of global warming and climate change? Of course, it is a gift of global warming. Odisha, as a state, is very vulnerable to extreme weather conditions. Odisha is placed on the coast of Bay of Bengal. So even a slight change in the sea's behavior can have an immediate impact on the coast. Heavy rains and cyclones are brought in by the low pressure center developing in its bay. Most farmers have always used methods like panchika, which are slowly losing their relevance due to this heavy rate of climate degradation. Wait, what is panchika? Panchika is a Hindu astronomical almanac that is extensively used as a spiritual as well as scientific calendar. The system of Panchika bases its forecast on the assumption that 120 days of rain are normal, spreading over six seasons. However, that is not the case now. The number of rainy days has come down to around 90 days. Odisha seasons have all but vanished. Its trees have altered their blooming season. Its birds have changed their mating habits and people are resorting to strange measures to cope up with these changes. Caught between the past and an uncertain future, life for the ordinary is a puzzle. Besides the disaster that strikes the state with frightening frequency, the change in climate is stark, affecting everything. The thing is, after March, the state government virtually declares a state of emergency. Yes. For the seven to eight years we have been seeing schools and colleges finishing their session by the end of March, offices opening early, hospitals stocking more ice seats than medicines. The global organizations have been warning us for decades about the dire consequences of climate change and we are almost doomed if we do not take the right steps. The richer is able to afford everything, every luxury, every comfort they wanted and the poor has to pay the price. I am really interested in the ways climate change affects the ecosystem in the Eastern Ghats. The recent climatic change had a share of effects on the change in ecosystem in Eastern Ghats and the surrounding area. Reduced and unseasonal rainfall along with increase in temperature has brought the world upon us. This has resulted in destruction of ecosystem and, bio and biodiversity. I wonder what the reason could be. Sudden increase in temperature and scattered rainfall. Some plants grow specifically in certain amounts of rainfall and temperature. Also, irregular changes in land and sea temperature brought about by global warming can lead to irregular changes in atmosphere and strong winds. This results in increased storm intensity in coastal areas, destroying ecosystem, uprooting trees, and polluting freshwater bodies as the debris often flies into them, disturbing the ecosystem. Did you guys know that change in precipitation patterns has affected the mangroves as well? Disturbances in freshwater supplies to mangroves leads to changes in salinity composition along the coast and threatens the mangroves, leading to changes in the species composition. Have you guys noticed that there are more female olive ridley turtles than males? Yes, that too is a consequence of climate change. In turtles, the sex depends upon the temperature of the nest. If the temperature is higher than pivotal temperature, it produces female offspring. If it is lower, it leads to male offspring. And with climate change and global warming, the temperature of the nest has risen. So the imbalance in the sex ratio is leading to more female offspring. Another factor is that once a baby turtle emerges from the nest, they use its cue to find water, including the slope of the beach, white crest of waves, and the natural light of the ocean horizon. But increase in light pollution is misleading them towards the land. Which is one of the many reasons beside the predators leading to the population demise. Also, after extreme weather events, a lot of sand gets deposited on the nesting beaches, burying the remaining eggs deeper than where the mother had laid them. Thus, the hatchlings find a great difficulty to dig their way up from such thick layers of sand and die. The thing is, these problems will escalate until we discuss some solutions and have something better for us that can replace at the same time a sustainable way with no change in the lifestyle we live. I guess many steps have been taken by the government like uh, new solar power plants and uh, in, like in Odisha itself we have found 
that new solar plants have been set up. Yes, but they are not enough for us if we strive for 2 degrees Celsius. Wait, what are the 2 degrees you just mentioned? It is an average temperature rise that has been calculated since the industrial revolution and we are now at 1.12 degrees Celsius. And it is projected that it will be up to 3 degrees Celsius until we get the things in hand. In my opinion, the commercial sector should make things with more sustainability. Yeah, but like how? Like let's say if, if we use green electricity and biodegradable parts and packaging, birds, they still be carbon footprint. So like how? Jinx, that's what I was thinking. Well, you know, I've been thinking, how are farmers coping up with these changes? They are after all the backbone of the economy, right? You're right. The main agricultural sectors, crop production and fishing have taken a hit over the past years. Changes in rainfall patterns have left the staple calls of Odisha vulnerable to low yields. Not only that, rising temperature and changes in rainfall patterns can create conditions that favor the growth of pests and diseases which can damage crops and reduce yields. Moreover, the rising sea levels are adding to the rising salinity along the coastline. You just mentioned fishing, right? Do you know the implications of climate change and other human activities on the aquatic ecosystem and aquaculture itself? Climate change and global warming has resulted in increasing temperature of ocean surface that disrupts the natural cycle resulting in changes in their mating season or egg laying season. Increased acidity of ocean has also disrupted aquatic ecosystems. Certain aquatic plants prefer certain pH, therefore making it difficult for them to grow in their natural habitat. This sudden change also led to irregular storms in the ocean, along with other human activities like oil spillage, over-exploitation has led to a death of a lot of marine fishes. When are humans going to understand? If things like keep going like this, all the fishes will die. This mass death of fishes disrupts the overall aquatic food chain. A lot of people have their livelihood dependent on fishing, so their lives are also affected by climate change. So rivers in Odisha are also greatly affected by the climate change. The rivers are actually getting more acidic day by day due to excessive evaporation. Also increasing the use of pesticides and heavy metals that are being added by the industrial waste and the industry itself. It causes a great damage to the ecosystem of the river and the ocean itself. So this phenomena causes biomagnification and bioaccumulation. Ecosystems are falling apart because of these reasons and the rivers will go acidic if we don't take the correct steps and the water is not treated properly before discharging them into rivers. Rivers in Odisha are mainly rain fed. So when monsoon or rainfall is irregular, fish as well as all the freshwater life production is interrupted as life cycles of fishes are disrupted. Also, do not forget the troubles caused by plastics. Excessive plastic waste in the river and ocean pollutes the environment. Fish eats those pla particles of plastic and is persist forever in the food chain. There are huge dumps of plastics found in seashores, river beds, and many more. Is there a way to stop all this? Okay, don't trip you guys. But you know, who else makes up the, makes up the roots? Migratory birds. And well, guess what influences that? Climate change. Alas, global warming influences the roots of many migratory birds and their annual migration rhythms. As a result of shifting temperatures, many migratory birds alter their travel path plans, cut them short, or abandon them altogether. Wait, wait, wait. They get lost? No, brother. They just find a new place with more suitable temperature and resources, as well as less competition. Preferably, a place with mild winters. They start to use food resources and breeding places for long migrations. As a consequence, long-distance migrants might find their breeding grounds occupied by a large number of resident birds. So much chirping about the problems. We need solutions. Climate change is a huge issue affecting our lives adversely. The issue is not something that can be solved at an individual or state level. Only combined efforts of individuals and all the states can accomplish this. Humans need to give up on the selfish and greedy desires. And that is where the problem arises. Nobody is willing to do so. So the biggest culprit here in global warming is caused by the emission of greenhouse gases. So this has led to a lot of problems, a lot, like heating of the atmosphere, heating of the ocean surfaces, 
and excessive melting of the ocean ice caps and glaciers. So each of these problems have led to a chain of consequences and it is like a, a chain reaction that actually continues for years and decades. So each of these problems are really serious for us and when which problems are we are supposed to deal separately. All the problems are actually combined. But we have to do something, right? Turn up the lights and fans when not in use. Minimize the carbon abuse. Use bicycles whenever you can. Renewable energy can save your land. Okay, the use of electric cars is also a great step that our institute took. In this day and age where going without technology is almost an absurd concept, we can make sure our grids doesn't blind our concise. Instead of carelessly throwing away electronic goods, once a better come once in, we should make sure the old ones are disposed of. That brings us to the five R's. Refuse, reuse, reduce, repurpose and recycle. Waste management is another very important aspect, like throwing dry and wet waste in their respective dustbins. These are very small efforts that can be done by even a five-year-old. We must teach these lessons to our next generations as well. Okay. So as a responsible citizen, we should focus on green politics. The policies that are encouraging the environmental care and protection should be encouraged. The government that is actually introducing them should come into power. Because, and also, like to be honest, every step matters, every small step you take matters. A report proves that if we reduce emissions, we can scale back pollution levels. We have the technology available to reduce emissions at the source. We just need to implement it seriously. If the environment is neglected, nature like always will find its way out to heal itself. And humans will face destruction as it is happening now. Adopting environmental friendly technique technologies is always an option that must be chosen. In fact, did you guys notice, we used to hear constantly that the ozone layer was depleting, but good news, it is slowly but surely healing itself back to its previous condition. In fact, in 43 years from now, it will completely revert back to its original state. This signifies that there is still some hope left for the planet. So, let's not give up and keep working for the greater cause.